Thanks for joining. We're going to review a solar install that we did on our camper. And everybody's familiar with this type of camping where there's friends and family all around and it's great. But sometimes you want to get out there and do something different like this. You want to get out in the woods and enjoy yourself and not have to drag a generator along. So we needed to make up our minds where we were going and how we were going to do it and we wanted to do it without a generator if we could. So we put our heads together and sat down with pen and paper and decided we wanted to get a newer camper and we wanted to put solar on it. So disclaimer, I'm not a professional. Everything you see here is for your entertainment. Uh, this is a how I did it video. Um, we started with a goal, um, like I said, on a piece of paper and we listed everything we wanted to do to form a plan all the way around from start to finish. Uh, once we got that plan in gear, uh, we set a little budget aside and we started doing some shopping. So first thing we did was we had to determine what we wanted to do and how much it was going to cost to do it. By running selected things in the camper, it limits how much money a uh, solar system costs. We did a load survey to determine what things would we use out on the road and just came up with a really good number on how big of a system we needed for a small RV. We have no plans of running the air conditioning around the clock, but we can run it for four hours. So that's what we did. We set out with a little bit of a plan. Once we got it on a spreadsheet, it wasn't too bad to figure out the size and number of components and what it was going to take to install it. But we had to make sure we could actually fit it in the footprint that we had. I started putting everything together on flat tables. I used cardboard templates and some uh, construction plywood just to see if everything would be a good dry fit in the compartment. Once I got a good solid layout, that's when we started mounting things and started doing the wiring. And uh, take the wiring in segments, you know, from the batteries to the inverter, you know, through the fuses and disconnects. Take them small sections at a time and focus on quality on the crimps and the condition of the lug terminals to make sure that they're flat, smooth, and clean with alcohol wipes. When you put them together, torque them to the spec. That way you'll have no trouble out on the road. You will notice when you start shopping for parts that not all solar system components are interchangeable. Part of the thing that I have is I found a few key parts on sale that just happen to be Renogy devices. There's the reason why you see quite a bit more Renogy products in this video because I needed them to be able to communicate and talk to, to one another. And it just so happens that their stuff had the best sales. Things were bought around Thanksgiving, Christmas, and take advantage of those uh, Amazon flash sales. So that's what we did. So we got our Furion automatic transfer switch in and today we're going to test the contacts inside this to make sure that it matches the nameplate and that so the primary side uh, will be for shore power and the secondary side in this case will be uh, single leg hot from a inverter system 3000 watts. We're going to try to put this automatic transfer switch inside of the electrical bay panel right behind the fuse box on our 2022 Freedom Express. So this is the back side of the panel and this is the wire coming in from the outside of the camper. This is the 50 amp incoming power so this will be the one we have to take off the panel and pull back and find a good convenient spot in here to uh, locate this new switch gear, automatic transfer switch. Rather than cut the underbelly up, I decided to mount EMT conduit to the bottom of the camper, uh, right onto the frame rail. And that is the route the wire from the front garage bay where the inverter and the batteries are all the way back to where the fuse box is so it 
it does not run through the underbelly. I didn't want to open that up. And somebody can remove this if they don't want the solar system down the road. Let's talk about quality components for a minute. When you use wire, use solid stranded copper wire. The wire I'm talking about is not aluminum clad. It's all 100% copper. And make sure it's the good copper wire. You can buy it in different places. Mine came from an electrical supply house. Um, the wire that I use is considered to be marine grade. Um, let's talk about lugs now. Uh, you can get lugs that come from China. There's lugs that you can get from India. Buy good quality lugs. Don't skimp on those. And make sure that you use a quality crimping tool, whether it's hydraulic or the type you put in the vise. But be careful not to distort the lugs so that they're not twisted. And so when the lugs touch a surface, they're nice and flat. Flat connections that are tight and clean won't generate hot spots. Hot spots cause fires. So take your time. This is one part you want to make sure you do a really good job of. take your solar panels to the roof. It's wise to check the polarity on the couplings just to make sure that these things are wired correctly. The red test lead on the plus of the wire, the black test lead on the negative side of the wire shows it's 22 volts positive. The more sun we get it in that goes up. So that means it's correct. If these plugs were labeled wrong, we would see a, a minus sign on the tester, which would indicate they're backwards and you could fry your solar panel, the controller on it, or your solar charger itself. You could fry that out.
So after one short trip, uh, I thought it'd be wise to uh, pre-drill some small holes and put some uh, caulk down in the holes, put a wood screw in, and then caulk everything on the top and around it. That way, at least the corners are tied down for long trips. I don't have to worry about it moving. But I do like the looks of the, uh, the plastic ABS material. Panels look really nice on the roof. They blend in. I still have clearance so they can stay cool. But it uh, looks really good. You can't see them. And uh, they're relatively inexpensive. So really happy how this turned out. If you have any questions on this video, please drop them in the comments. We appreciate you watching. Please give us a like and subscribe.